In the last video, we finished putting this thing together. There was a few quality of life issues, such as the CPU fan didn't want to spin, and the CF to ID card uh, adapter had to be mounted in the back, and I didn't like that very much. So let me show you a few things that I've updated since then, and today we're gonna benchmark this thing, just see how fast it can go, or slow, it could be slow, um, probably slow, but <laughs> we'll see. I moved my IDE CF card adapter from the back of the case to the front of the case and it took a couple of iterations of printing up uh, different brackets but what ultimately worked was I just mounted it upside down. If you remember last time our ribbon cable here here uh, when mounted the other way around which would seem like it's the right way around was running into our floppy drive and just flipping it over we got plenty of room so no issues there and as far as our CPU cooler goes nothing I could set in the BIOS or do would kick the fan on at seemingly any temperature um, when it was plugged into the three pin CPU fan header on the motherboard and so what I did was just There it is. I used an adapter, a uh, three pin uh, fan adapter to a four pin Molex connector. And now it runs at full speed, but I don't, I don't think there was any kind of speed control for the fan built into this motherboard anyway. So uh, now we have a properly running computer and no issues with heat. CF card up front where it's easy to access and um, things are good. One of the first things you'll see as we boot it up, there's been a, I don't know, fairly major change. And I'll show you that in a second. That's right, we're doing Windows 98 on this one for a couple of reasons. Um, mainly, there was hardware on this motherboard that I don't believe Windows 95 drivers exist for. Uh, mostly, uh, the Universal Serial Bus Controller, uh, the Windows 95 OS R2 CD, the drivers that came with it didn't work. Um, and there was a port, and I can't remember what it was, but there was another port or hardware conflict in there and it just said uh, it was the yellow question mark and it didn't give me any information and in these old versions of Windows you, you really don't get a whole lot of information in here as far as hardware IDs and stuff like that so it makes it hard to find drivers for stuff and snooping around on the internet I saw that the Windows 98 disk had drivers on it uh, for all the hardware on this motherboard. So that's what we went with. It's it's not a huge change. I never actually owned a computer with Windows 98. So this will be a learning experience for, well, for me. Uh, other than that, uh, let's get into it. Let me just boot up DOS Bench. And just a quick refresher, this is a Pentium 233 MMX uh, ATI Rage Pro 2 graphics chipset, uh, 256 megs of RAM, and a CF card to ID adapter. So it's kind of like an SSD, about as fast as you can go on the um, uh, IDE, uh, you know, you know what I mean. So, I notice when I run uh, the VGA benchmark for slower PCs, it does like, I don't know, 200 frames a second, but it always shows me 42.8. If you run the one labeled for faster computers, you get a more uh, realistic number, 132.3.
22.7. Do the Doom Max details. Time demo 640 to And there we have it. it. It performs pretty much the way I thought it would. Um, it's lacking a little bit in the 3D higher resolutions like Quake Time Demo 640 by 480. I think we struggled to get even to 15 frames a second, whereas the regular Time Demo, the Quake Time Demo, uh, will reach, uh, I think it was 45 frames a second. But we didn't build this computer to run things on the low settings. Um, my computer back in the day, the old Pentium 150, non-MMX, couldn't really touch this thing as far as performance goes, but I think there's a lot more to be gotten out of it. 14.7 uh, is pretty low, even for 640 before 80. I got a comment on my first video where somebody said that uh, although the motherboard with the 430TX Intel chipset supported 256 megs of RAM, it had actually performed better if it was only 64 megs of RAM because it can only cache 64 megs of RAM. Um, I did some searching on the internet and it's kind of a um, argument on the internet about it uh, where some people say the 64 megabytes with, uh, that it can cache will be way faster than having 256 megabytes of RAM because then it won't cache any of it. Um, some people argued that having 256 megs or just higher than 64 megabytes um, would reduce page file swapping uh, and thrashing on your hard drive. Uh, nobody really had an answer which one was better. I didn't see anybody who did any tests or anything like that. So I kind of took it upon myself to jump on eBay and come up with 64 megs of SD RAM. It's PC-133. What's in there, I believe, is PC100. Um, so it's not really an apples to apples comparison, but it's pretty close. So I'm gonna chuck this 64 megs in there and we'll run these tests again and see if anything changes too much. Looks like we didn't see much difference in any of the gaming benchmarks uh, nor any of the CPU benchmarks, which is to be expected um, from 256 to 64 megabytes. However, SpeedSys showed us a gain in the data cache L1 test 
with 256 megabytes that gave us 424 megs uh, megabytes per second whereas 64 megabytes we only got 360 some so there's something to be said about that but whether or not you'll actually see that kind of performance helping you in any games or in, in Windows is to be determined so now we'll head into Windows and run a benchmark in there and see if 64 or 256 would be the better configuration okay it's currently I don't know two weeks later um, during filming I had to add some files to my CF card so I take it over to my uh, modern PC Windows 10 put some files on it and it corrupted and the entire file system got messed up and I had to format the whole disk and I got kind of um, upset I guess and I just put it on the back burner for a little while but here we are in Windows 98 again everything reinstalled and we're gonna run PC Mark 20 uh, 02 2002 2002 what the that sounded insane anyways we're gonna run PC Mark 2002 um, with 64 megs of RAM and then we're gonna turn around and run it with 256 megs of RAM and see if we have any improvements uh, the only caveat however is that there are some tests in this that simply refuse to run on this computer and it's mostly the video memory um, so if we go into here custom um, video memory will not run crunch test will not run and if I remember right the rest of these run just fine so unfortunately we won't be able to get a memory score but we can go and see all the individual outcomes of the tests and um, compare them so let's get started I should probably press this. We'll be back in uh, nine minutes. Now for the test with 256 megs. Uh, again, there are some tests that we won't be able to run. Video memory crashes it. Crunch test crashes it. Um, but we should get a pretty good idea um, based on the breakdown. At least I hope. I hope we will. We'll see. See you in like 10 minutes. Looking over the results, I'm seeing that overall it looks like 64 megabytes is the way to go with most tests being slightly higher than the 256 megabytes, which is kind of surprising. Uh, especially since they're both PC-133. However, I'm seeing in two of the tests, the 64 megabytes won by 50 plus megabytes a second or more. Um, specifically, in the random access, uh, we're seeing average speeds on the 256 are like 125 megabytes a second, whereas we're reaching as high as 176 megabytes a second. Um, Kind of surprising, so I guess we're going to stick with 64 megs. Alright, well we built it, we ironed out some bugs, we got an OS installed, we benchmarked it, and really all that's left is to play some games on it. But, spoiler alert, I've been playing games on it, and it does really well, especially in build engine titles. Um, unfortunately I lost all my save files, but what can you do? Next time, I'll show you how well it plays games um, such as Duke Nukem 3D, uh, Need for Speed 2, uh, Unreal, stuff like that. And we'll see if we can't optimize it a bit and get some playable frame rates. And if we can't, we'll see what we can do about that as well. All right. Thanks very much for watching. If you like my show, if you like what I've shown you, please give it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe. If you didn't like it, why don't you go ahead and thumbs up and give me a subscribe because I could I could use it.